So important. Hey, baby. Hi. Hannah's gonna be leaving me for the weekend. What are you doing? Where are you Why going? Why do you have to film me right now? <laughs> I'm going to do past life regression. Oh yeah, in Phoenix? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm gonna miss you. You're gonna be gone all weekend. I know, it's gonna be great. Ah. I thought I'd be able to do most of this garage myself, but let me tell you, putting these trusses together has been a lot of work for Brian and I and our other neighbors, Amber and Mike, they helped us out, and even Jason, um, who's moving to the area, he helped out for a bit one day. I have these people that live in this area that are in my life that can come out and help out, and likewise, if they help me, I can always go and help them with their big projects too. And what I hope that you guys really gain from my videos is the inspiration and some education so that even if you don't want to do a big project like this yourself, you can start with small projects wherever you live right now and you can move towards a life where you're going to be much happier, things are going to be much more sustainable, you become a much more competent individual. So if you like these videos, definitely subscribe to my channel because I'm posting videos um, updating you on these projects, our rainwater harvesting projects, our solar projects, all that kind of stuff. Today is the last day for building the trusses. I haven't shown you guys any of the other truss building because it's been pretty monotonous. But we've got a stack of eight trusses here, another stack of eight right here, and then we've got three more finished right here, and we have four left to complete all the trusses that are going to be going across here. And these are big guys. They're 45 feet from eave to eave. So putting these together myself was just not going to happen. Brian and I, we've timed ourselves. It takes us about an hour for the two of us to do one truss. So 23 trusses total. It's been a lot of work over this past week. I'm getting pretty wiped out. It's Friday. We work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Brian has arrived and we are, we're ready to get started and we'll show you how we build one of these trusses. Uh, but they've been all pretty well the same and we've got a pretty good system going for how they're getting built. So we've got our peak piece right here, which is kind of like the top of the roof. And then we've got some really long guys. I think they're like 185 inches long or something like that. And then they attach to the peak and then we have our corners on each side. So we drop one right here, take the other one, bring it over to the side. So the way that these go together, they just kind of slip into each other, then you screw through them. So we just kind of get it started first. And then we have Brian or myself, we stand on the peak side there. We take our pounding block with a sledge and we just slap her into place. One tap will do. One tap, and then we always like to give her the extra little love tap. There we go. Before we screw this together, we take our big level and just make sure that the pieces are nice and straight. Looks like it's got to come in just a little bit. So the more time and effort that we take with these little things right here, these little details, the better our finished product is going to be. So Brian pushes that over just, can you do a bit more? Yeah, so that's really good right there. Normally we use a power drill. I just don't want to run the generator right now just for the uh, ambiance noise, but we put four screws to hold this together right here. And repeat. Perfect. Put four more screws in this guy right here. So then we put in our end pieces here. And some of these end pieces are different, so it depends where it's lining up. So you can see this one seems really short probably compared to the other ones. That's because this truss is going over the garage door header, uh, the tall ones there. So it's gonna have a shorter kind of stub, whereas some of them are about that long. Sledging in these end ones can be really loud with the steel, so we usually put our hearing protection on. So then again, the angle on these is really important. So we wanna make sure that it's at the right angle. Because if this is crooked this way or that way, it makes a difference on our eave length. So from edge to edge on these trusses, we want exactly 45 feet. 
So we've got to push it out just a little bit. And we found that using the cinder blocks like this it. holds it into place nicely. Yeah, that's, that's really good right there. So then we'll do the same on the other side. Yep. Yep. Cool. And sometimes with just sledging these guys together, we're right on 45, sometimes we're about an inch short. And so then what we do is we make an adjustment at these joints right here. So for an inch short, so we're 45, uh, 44 feet and 11 inches, we bring each side out half an inch and then that will give us our 45. So we've got our trusty tape measure, nice long guy. So we're basically an inch short right now. So that means that we just have to come out half an inch on each one of these joints here. So I just make a mark at the joint here with my marker. So I know exactly where we're starting. And then we have Brian just lightly tap it out. Just some love taps. A little bit more, right there. We're gonna take our level, make sure it's nice and level again. Cause that angle makes a big difference on that eave length there. So then we're gonna go to the other side and move it out half an inch as well. Okay, quarter inch, a little bit more, a little bit more. All right, yeah, let's try that there. Yeah, that's right on the money there. So we've got our exact measurement, 45 feet outside to outside. And now we can screw these end pieces in with uh, four more of those framing screws. So the next step that we do is we sledge the, um, I don't even know what you'd call this. Basically the, the bottom of the truss, which is gonna be the ceiling, we sledge it together here. There. Good. We're gonna screw this together using six of the framing screws. Sure. Make sure that they're nice and straight so that we're not screwing them kind of cockeyed. Do you remember the cock counter? <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> A little cockeyed there. <laughs> So we found that when we sledge in one side and the other side is tight, that when we're sledging it, the other side kind of comes a little bit loose. So that's why we screw one and then we'll take this other side, sledge it in. They're good. Okay. So we know this distance for this crossbar piece here is uh, exactly 42 feet. Um, we've encountered sometimes where it's been like 42 and 3 eighths. So we've cut off 3 eighths on one end. Other times I've encountered where it's about an eighth of an inch short. So then we just extend it just a little bit, but we want to be on 42 feet right on the money. Then we're ensuring that all of our pieces are gonna be the same. All right, so yeah, we're right on 42, so we don't have to make any adjustments and we can uh, screw it together. So with these end pieces that are going over the high uh, garage door headers, we actually had to just trim off a piece of this just so that it didn't extend past the end here. And what this piece does is as the roof line comes down to the corner here, we still want a straight piece that we're gonna be attaching our hat channel and then essentially our roof to as well. And then the gutter will be on this side as well. So we've got Brian right there. He's looking down the line here just to make sure that this piece is nice and straight. How's that looking? You pretty much gotta tap that, bring us flush again up on my end. Yep. Uh, yeah. That's pretty good. And then we want to check our other way down here. And that one, it can be adjusted just a little bit so it can come out a little bit more this way. All right, that's, that's good. And we're still good on this side. Looks good. Okay, so now there's room to put a lot of screws in this and we're only putting in two screws because when these trusses are up into place, I'm gonna basically run a string line from end to end. And um, then I can adjust all these eaves just so that they're going to be right on the money if I need to make any adjustments. So on this side here, the piece is a little bit different. It already comes pre-bent and welded at the right angle. And then on this side here, this little extension piece is how we attach the lean on. How's that? Looks Maybe one more. Yeah. So again, checking this. This side's a little bit off. So then we slide this guy up into place here. We're essentially gonna be looking at the distance between the edge of this two by two piece. And there's like a little dimple at the corner here that we measure to, and it's typically between two and a half and two and three quarters inch. So we just center it between the two sides here. So now we've got this guy centered, is before we start to screw these brackets down, 
that hold it into place is we want to make sure that our cross piece here is perfectly straight. So we use these cinder blocks to kind of hold it right where we want it. We'll have Brian go down to one side. He's going to look down the line and let me know any adjustments that we need to make for this. So your cinder block needs to come up. Up this way? Yep. All right. Doing all these self-tapping screws, it just burns through your battery. So for probably about at least 90% of the screws, we, we just use a corded drill here. And we just gotta be uh, careful that we don't break off this, the head of the screw. So we got all the shoes in that guy, do the same on the other side. So all these trusses, we build them ourselves using these uh, braces and these brackets that go up against it. And then we start the truss at the end of this dimple right here on this uh, on the peak piece. Then with the, that first one attached, we can come to the next one here. So we've got our bracket that's gonna go like that. Put our bolt through. And this is why we use these cinder blocks in place because as we push this out to match it up, if we push that out a little bit, then it's gonna affect how straight our ceiling is going to be. So we don't want our ceiling to be going like a snake. We want it to be nice and straight. And then we do the same thing on the rest of these braces here. Get some more screws in. So Brian come in, use the, uh, the socket and the wrench to tighten this up. Because right now there's still a little bit of play in these truss braces because these bolts aren't tight yet. And one reason why we put three screws in there and then we tighten that up um, because we want this to be nice and secure because there's also two screws that need to go in there and if we're pushing out there, pushing out this way, mainly on these pieces down here, if we're pushing out while we're screwing, it can kind of mess up how straight uh, the ceiling is going to be. Beautiful. So then we just continue doing that for the rest of the uh, truss here, and this guy's done. Whoop. Oh, baby. Come on. Yes! We did it! Alright guys, so that's a wrap on the truss building. So probably Wednesday of next week, I'll uh, get the crane out here so that we can lift them into place. And then Monday and Tuesday, we've got some time to do some of the hat channels and also making sure everything is uh, vertically plumb the other way. Also, make sure you check out Brian's channel, Midlife Prices. I'll leave a link in the description box and in the comments section below. They just live down the road from us a few miles away and uh, he's been a great help out here. And I don't, I, could, I wouldn't be able to do this by myself. This would have been insane to try to even do by myself. So big thanks to him. He's learning lots, getting his confidence with, uh, with construction. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get this sucker done real soon. Awesome, thanks so much for watching guys. Talk to you in the next video. Talk to you soon. Peace.